Good evening, viewers. Uh, welcome to the 2021 Oliver Ames High School versus Sharon virtual swim meet. Uh, we're coming to you from the Raynham Athletic Club in Raynham, Massachusetts. We're here on uh, Thursday, January 21st, 2011. Tonight will be our uh, honoring our seniors, and throughout the broadcast, we'll be recognizing our um, Oliver Ames seniors as they compete in one of their final swim meets uh, for Oliver Ames High School, and we'll try to call them out in their various events. Oliver Ames competed um, last week against Foxborough virtually and came away with uh, wins for both the boys and the girls teams. Slightly different format than, than usual in the virtual format. Um, and as we get into the meet, we'll explain some of the changes that have been made to ensure that the athletes are safe and remaining uh, socially distant throughout the meet as best as possible. Um, and also you'll see them donning their masks at the end of their, end of their meets. First event is the 200 medley relay. Leading off for Oliver Ames um, in lane four is Jennifer Bookie. In lane two, we have Emily Kelly. And in lane six, we have Alyssa St. Louis. And you'll notice in lane three, we have the boys competing. The boys will be uh, swimming for their best times. Le leading off was Brian Wang. He'll be followed by Evan Foltz, then senior Ben Turner. And bringing that team home will be Aaron Manning. The medley relay consists of four events, each lap um, of 50 yards, beginning with the backstroke, followed by the breaststroke, then the butterfly, and finishing off with the freestyle. And we can see Ben Turner competing against himself for a best time here. With, uh, looks like Sam Stratton leading off the, uh, the women's division. And on the blocks for the uh, girls to bring it home will be senior Ava Kelly. And Ava Kelly is into the water. Aaron Manny for the boys. And following the meet, the times for um, each swimmer and each relay team will be entered into a database. Sharon High School will do the same. And the scores will then tabulate the scores and we'll find out the results of the meet tomorrow morning. A strong finish by Ava Kelly with their Oliver Ames team one. And looks like Oliver Ames team two. And Oliver Ames team three bringing it home. Next event will be the 200 free.
Competing in the 200 free will be senior Sam Stretton. She'll be in the center lane in lane four. Also competing will be Anna Maria Bartoletti, also a senior, and Ella Rivers. Looks like we also have two, um, two boys competing in this event as well. In the center lane will be Ben Turner. And Martin Sankoff will be in lane five. The 200 freestyle. Ben Turner opening up a nice gap, along with Sam Stratton leading the girls. Ben Turner showing strong form. Turner wrapping up his four years at Oliver Ames, a very strong uh, swimmer for the team. And he'll be heading to Worcester Polytech for college next year. Making an early decision to go to WPI. Turner finishing strong. And Sam Stratton bringing it in for the girls. Again, all of the times are entered into a database. Sharon swimming uh, simultaneously at their uh, venue. And we'll be putting in uh, times and scoring overnight to get our results. You'll notice a lot of clapping in the, uh, the virtual meets. Uh, one of the uh, competition rules that's been put in place for COVID-19 uh, to mitigate the spread of virus or the potential spread is there's no cheering allowed. So uh, the best the athletes can do in these scenarios is to clap for their teammates. So you'll hear a lot more clapping.
for those who have followed the Oliver Ames team over the past couple of years, uh, we did have a venue change this year. Um, we are unable to swim at Massasoit Community College uh, due to the COVID restrictions. Um, we were very fortunate to uh, secure the opportunity to, to use the Raynham Athletic Club. And one of the interesting uh, side stories with the Raynham Athletic Club is a number of the swimmers on this team got their start in swimming uh, at this very pool when they were uh, seven, eight years old. Uh, taking swim lessons here. It was one of the more uh, dynamic places uh, in the area to learn swimming. And many went on to um, swim as part of club programs. Uh, Bluefish Swim Club operated uh, swim lessons here. And um, so many of the swimmers uh, really cut their teeth in, in swimming uh, at this pool. So it's fitting uh, for some of these seniors like Ava Kelly uh, to be able to come back and, and finish their uh, swimming career uh, at, at the Raynham Athletic Club where it all began. The next event will be the 200 individual medley. So swimming the Chu I am for the boys, we have Brian Wang and Anthony Hoffman. For the girls swimming the Chu I am, we have Amanda Barth, Kiki Esteman, one of our seniors, and Katherine Hoffman. Two IM starts with the butterfly. Transition, swimmers transition to the backstroke, then the breaststroke, and then they finish with the freestyle. 50 meters of each, each event. One of the more challenging events to swim uh, due to the changing strokes. And it's also very technical with the turns. You have to get the turns exactly right. Uh, the officials are um, keeping an eye mostly on the turns to make sure that the athlete doesn't roll out of the stroke too early and glide into the wall. They actually have to carry that stroke almost to the wall and then execute a perfect turn. Makes it one of the more difficult uh, events to swim. And each of the turns is a little bit different, how they touch the wall. If you see an official's hand raised, it indicates there might be a disqualification, usually for a turn. And we have our first swimmer entering the final, final stroke, the freestyle while the remainder of the field finishes their breaststroke. With the breaststroke turn, they have to touch both hands on the wall before they turn. Both hands have to touch. That looks like Brian Wang with the best time among the swimmers. And Frank Amanda Barth and bringing it home for the girls with Kiki Esteman. Second for the girls. And Katherine Hoffman finishing.
Our next event will be the 50 free, 50 freestyle coming up next. Swimming the 50 free. Be Abigail DeFrancesco. Katie Gillespie, one of our seniors, and Paige Gray. Now let's see who we have for the boys. Looks like Evan Hilliard for the boys and Aaron Manny. And again, the boys are swimming with the girls. They're not competing directly against them. Uh, everybody's swimming for a best time. Those times are then entered into the system and the boys are scored separately from the girls. So even though they are sharing uh, the pool, they are um, not competing directly against one another. So one of the protocols we have in place for uh, COVID is that the athletes will wear their masks up until they get to the blocks. Once they get to the blocks, just before the start of the event, uh, they'll de put their mask in a Ziploc bag. Those bags are then collected by uh, one of our runners and she brings them to the other end of the pool. When the athletes, uh, when the swimmers finish their event, they get to swim a 25 yard cool down to the far end of the pool. They retrieve their mask, put it back on, and then exit the pool. So a lot of difference uh, a year makes in, in a swim season, but the athletes have adapted to many of these changes to, and it's important to allow them this opportunity to enjoy their sport as best as possible. 50 free. Athletic Club. Uh, we're getting ready to resume our competition here with the 100 fly, the 100 fly. So in the center lane, and that's lane four, we have Jen Buki. Um, in the far lane from the camera, we have Sophie Hurdle. And, oh, no, in the closer lane, we have Sophie Hurdle. Yeah. And then in the closer lane, we have Sam Stratton, one of our seniors. That uh, looks like. And we have Brian Wang. Stratton, uh, pretty, pretty good competition here. They're all working together. Good coming off the wall, Jen Bookie, Brian Wang, head to head. Sam Stratton chasing. And it looks like still dead even. Although they're not competing against each other, they're definitely working and pulling each other. Stratton starting to close the gap. Stratton in the closest lane to us. 
Brian Wang in the middle. Jen Bookie in the, in the center lane. And here comes Stratton. Stratton trying to catch Wang. Stratton reaching. And it looks like, oh, too close to call. Too close to call. Hurdle bringing it home. Probably one of our strongest races uh, of the night. Pretty evenly matched across the, uh, the lanes. Our next event will be the 100 free, another one of our fast races. Um, in the center lane will be Ava Kelly, one of our seniors. In lane six, the far lane, we have Anna Maria Bertoletti. And in lane two, closest to us, we have Alyssa St. Louis, also a senior. The boys competing in this event, we have Aaron Manny in lane three and Anthony Hoffman in lane five. Good times for this event. Should be right around one minute. One hundred freestyle. And it looks like a head-to-head -head duel here. Ava Kelly off to a strong start for the females. Still close at the turn. Kelly opening a gap. This will be Kelly's fourth season with the Oliver Ames swim team. Perennial All-Star. One of the anchors this year for the relays. Lane closest to us, we have another senior, Alyssa St. Louis. And in lane six, Anna Maria Bertoletti. Looks like Kelly brings it home. Aaron Manny in second. And again, not competing against each other, but definitely pushing one another towards best times. Following the 100 free, we'll have the 500 free. The long race of the evening. It's about a six to seven minute event. In lane four, we have a standout swimmer, junior captain, Emma O'Hara. In lane two, closest to us, Ella Rivers. And in lane six, Alexandra Glannon. A 
We'll have one boy, Evan Foltz, swimming, representing the boys team. Swimmers are gonna swim 10 laps of the pool. That's 20 lengths of the pool, 10 laps. And when the first swimmer reaches their ninth lap, you'll hear the official ring the bell and that will indicate the bell lap, the final lap of the race. Looking for Emma O'Hara to, to have a good performance here. Swimming in the center lane. Five hundred is an endurance event, uh, but it's still short enough that you you can't back off. You have to get out get out fast, establish the rhythm, and then normally that last uh, hundred and fifty, really accelerating through that last hundred and fifty, trying to pick up the pace um, and trying to uh, set a negative split. So you're swimming the second half of the race a little bit faster than the first half of the race. Difficult to do, but. Experienced swimmer like Emma O'Hara can pull that off. And the swimmers for the 500 are into the water. And Evan Foltz for the boys, leading the boys. Emma O'Hara leading the girls. And O'Hara hanging strong with Foltz. Foltz and O'Hara continuing to leave, lead the uh, event. You'll see at the end of the lane, uh, some of their teammates are using um, lap counter cards. And what they're doing is they're, they're telling the swimmer how many lengths of the pool they have, have completed. So the numbers will go up in, in odd numbers. Um, you see in the center lane there, have one of the captains, Ryan, uh, doing the lap cards for Emma O'Hara. Uh, and he's uh, preparing to uh, put the number five into the pool. This is a way also for the uh, lap counters to uh, encourage the swimmer. If they're getting some pacing instruction from the coach, uh, they will hold the card steady. If the coach wants them to accelerate, um, or they're, you know, maybe there's a, a close race. If somebody's closing in on them, you'll see them shake the card vigorously up and down as an indication to pick up the pace. So we have both uh, O'Hara and Foltz uh, pretty even. Looks like O'Hara might actually be starting to, to bridge the gap here. Uh, they're both at lane or at length number seven. Evan Foltz and Emma O'Hara continuing to set the pace for the field. In the lane closest to us, Ella Rivers just completed her seventh uh, length of the pool. And Foltz and O'Hara approaching the midpoint, midpoint. On the final, the final length, they'll see a red a red marker on that lap card, and that'll be the indication that they're on their final lap.
So at this point in the race, Emma O'Hara has taken the lead. Foltz is uh, sitting on, uh, just on her toes. You can actually draft in this race. Uh, you, sometimes in the more elite level of swimmers, you'll see them move to the hip of the swimmer in the lane next to them. And if you swim just off the hip, you'll catch a little bit of draft in that wake. You're almost like riding a wake like a surfboard. So you wanna get your head up just, uh, just a little bit of the head of the hip, and you'll see a little bit of wake forming off the, uh, if you look at Emma O'Hara here, see a little bit of wake forming and if you can just ride that wave, you'll get a little bit of drafting, just like if you're in a bicycle race. Looks like Fultz has slipped just outside of that draft zone. They're completed 15 lengths, so they're about three quarters of the way through the race. So Hara looking strong. Fultz also looking strong. Ella Rivers. One lap behind, but good form, steady stroke. And we did have a withdrawal in lane six. So if you're watching from home in the far lane, the athlete did withdraw from the race. Seventeen lanes in, one and a half to go. About forty-five seconds from the finish. O'Hara continuing to turn over. Fultz reaching for that stroke. Rivers looking strong. There's the bell. Bell indicates the final lap, final lap, final lap for Emma O'Hara. Now, another thing that's, that's happening with these virtual meets is normally um, the MIA would be recording best times from competition. Um, and those times would work to qualify athletes for sectional and state championships. Unfortunately, this season, we don't uh, have sectional or state championships. Those have already been canceled for the, for the season due to COVID. So one thing that is happening, however, is that MIAA is uh, recording those times and they're starting to build a database of best times throughout the season. So um, an athlete really does have a motivation to improve week to week, get themselves into that top 10 uh, at, by the end of the season for, um, uh, for all the athletes across their, their league, uh, their section, and then finally for that, that state meet. So uh, unfortunate for the athletes, they won't have that experience of, of going to a state championship uh, this year. Uh, but uh, kudos to MIA for being creative and looking for opportunities to recognize the, the hard work that the athletes are putting in um, amid all of the challenges of uh, COVID-19. Rivers looking to finish her final lap here. Following the 500, we're gonna have another relay. It's a 200 free relay coming up next. As Ella Rivers brings it home in lane two. And there you go, good job. Always a challenging event to, uh, to swim that 500. Encouragement by Coach Gray as we head into the final few events of the meet. Uh, next up will be the 200 free relay, one of the fastest events. I'm gonna try to get you the lineup here. So in this, this race, each swimmer is swimming four, or the, the team is swimming four, four laps of the pool. Each swimmer is swimming 50 yards, 50 free. This has been a strong event for the Oliver Eames team over the past few years. Uh, two years ago, 
Oliver Ames set the sectional record, the sectional meet record in the 200 free relay. Um, that was two years back. Um, and they continue to be a powerhouse at the 200 free last year, um, competing at both the uh, sectionals and the states. Uh, one of the athletes who um, was on that record-setting team two years back was Ava Kelly. She'll be leading off for uh, the, the uh, first team in lane four. Uh, in lane two, leading off, it's like we're going to have Alyssa St. Louis. And then in lane six, leading off will be Katie Gillespie. So the coaches typically organize relays such as this um, to maximize that best team, uh, best time. Uh, so when they match that time up for uh, against Sharon, hopefully we uh, come out on top. Leading off for the boys will be Aaron Manning. He'll be followed by Ben Turner. Then Evan Foltz, who just swam that 500. He's got to shake out that lactic acid. And Brian Wang will bring it home. In the water first for the girls, Ava Kelly. She's going to push this pace hard. Looking to swim about 26 seconds. 26 for the 50 free. One nice opportunity that you have leading off a relay, and it looks like Kelly's got the gap, is that that score, that time that you set as the lead off in a relay counts as an individual time. So if you're trying to qualify for, say, a sectional championship or a state championship, if you have the opportunity to lead off, it's like getting a bonus opportunity to swim that time. Because sometimes you only get maybe one or two or three opportunities during a season to, uh, to swim a best time, but leading off a relay can be a nice little, nice little bonus. Ben Turner, moving strong. Boys have opened up a slight gap here over uh, the, the A team for the girls. Round out our, our teams here for the, the first OA team. We had Ava Kelly, Amanda Barth, Paige Gray and Sophie Hurdle will be bringing it home. She's up on the blocks now. In the lane closest to us, lane two, we had Alyssa St. Louis, Jaden Wilkinson, Anna Maria Bertoletti, and Hayden. Hayden will be uh, bringing it home. It looks like Hayden's up on the blocks now. Hayden's one of our seniors. And here goes Hayden into the water. Senior season, bringing it home. In the far lane for the girls, Katie Gillespie let it off. And then we had uh, Valerie Vent. And then we had Ella in the third and Rory in the fourth lane, bringing it in the fourth position. It's like we got Rory in the water now. Hayden, Hayden bringing it home for the girls, number two team. And here comes Rory Noonan. The uh, 200 relay is also an opportunity to, to get experience and oftentimes we'll see swimmers that may not get experience as in individual events because uh, the coach can really only start so many athletes per race. Uh, the 200 uh, and the medley relay, relay provide some opportunities for additional athletes to get in and, uh, and compete. So great job, Rory. Great job, Hayden. And uh, good job to the uh, winning team. Swimming in lane four. I'll be shifting back to the individual events. We have three events to go. All right, next up. Next up is the 100 backstroke. 100 backstroke. 
for the boys, we've got Evan in lane five and Ben in lane three. Lane three and five for the boys. Ben Turner, one of our seniors heading to WPI in the fall. Evan Hilliard. In lane four, Emily Kelly. In lane two. Lane two looks like Jen Buki. Got to consult my sheet here, but it looks like Jen Buki in lane two. This is going to be a fast race. And look for Buki to break out on this one. Bookie and Turner, this is where this race is gonna come down to, Bookie and Turner. Emily Kelly holding her own in lane four in the middle. Turner's got a slight gap. Kelly swimming strong. In lane six, we have Tegan Kelly. Two Kellys in the race, not related. We do have two sisters on the team with Ava Kelly and Emily Kelly. Tegan Kelly swimming in lane six. Ben Turner continuing to swim strong with Jen Buki on his hip. Emily Kelly in third. Nice finish by Ben and Jen. Emily bringing it home. Evan for the boys and Tegan for the girls. Neck and neck. I mentioned some of the technique in this and the backstroke's another one of these techniques where the finish is also unique. Oftentimes with the backstroke, you'll see the swimmer dive under the water as they approach the, the, um, the wall and try to reach for that wall and really extend one hand out. They only need to touch one hand at the finish. And they'll reach and extend that hand out and try to out-touch the swimmer next to them. Next event up will be the 100 breaststroke and then we'll be finishing up with the 400 freestyle relay. So for the 100 breast, we've got Katarina Hoffman in lane two. We've got Sophie Belanger in lane four, that's the middle lane. And then in the far lane, senior Kiki Esteman. Esteman's another one of those swimmers who very likely got her start here at the Raynham Athletic Club swimming with the Bluefish uh, Club. Back in the very early days of swim lessons, came up through the ranks with Ava and Emily Kelly swimming here at Raynham Athletic Club. Uh, went on to be a club swimmer and now a, a long-standing high school swimmer uh, with her older sister who graduated a couple of years ago. For the boys in lane three, we got Evan Fultz. And Martin Senkoff in lane five. It's like Martin's out to a good start. Breaststroke is also a deceiving stroke to swim. Casual swimmers can hop in the pool and they feel that they can easily kind of coast along with a breaststroke. 
But to do it technically correct is actually quite difficult. And you'll find that certain swimmers really specialize in the breaststroke because of the unique um, kicking motion and trying to get that glide, the timing of the kick and the glide to do it right. You'll also notice the head position moving. And the head really drives the hips in the breaststroke. So if you get that, that head position shifting, um, you can really drive those hips. Looks like Martin took that one home. Strong finish. Well, that was Evan, Evan Foltz. Evan Foltz, and then Martin came in uh, second for the boys. Coming up, our last event of the evening. Last event of the evening will be the 100 freestyle relay. 100 freestyle relay. OA fielding a strong team with Ava Kelly, Emma O'Hara, Emily Kelly, and Sam Stratton. They'll be in lane four. In lane two, we're gonna see Tegan Kelly Sophia Belanger, Kiki Esterman, and Ella Rivers. And in lane six, we've got, uh, we've got Ella Merzwinski, Bridget McDonough, Katie Gillespie, and senior Alyssa St. Louis. And it looks like there will be no boys relay team tonight. So if you're a uh, young man out there at Oliver Ames or maybe an eighth grader who's uh, looking to swim next year, uh, we're definitely recruiting more young men to, uh, to swimming. Uh, it's a great sport to um, consider if you're uh, playing a fall sport or a spring sport. Uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, build that aerobic fitness. Um, the team also does a lot of strength work, uh, so preconditioning for a spring sport. Um, and you can come out, learn, um, you know, learn a couple of strokes and contribute. And you'd be swimming that 100 free right now and helping the team out with those extra points that could be scored in the, uh, the final event of the evening. So young, young men, we're looking for you on the Oliver Ames swim team next year. And we're just waiting for the uh, scores to prepare for this final event of the evening. Officials have given the thumbs up. Athletes are removing their masks, putting them in those Ziploc bags so they can retrieve them at the end of the event. In lane four, leading off will be Ava Kelly, one of our seniors. She'll be going up against Tegan and Ella. Guys, we need a girl for Alyssa. A girl who's only done three events. Listen up.
So a slight delay here while we finalize the uh, order of the teams. Going back to our seniors. A um, number of these young women have uh, started to set their sights on uh, what they're going to do next season. Ava Kelly looking at uh, studying aerospace engineering in college. You know, one of our other seniors, Sam Stratton, uh, one of the top ranked uh, students at all of our aims um, academically and uh, being courted by many of the, uh, the top universities. Really outstanding young, young athletes coming up. Ava taking out out strong. Setting a good pace for the team. That's the 100, so she's doing two laps. And she'll be um, followed up by Emma O'Hara. Ava's made the turn for home. One of the challenges of swimming virtually, you gotta keep that race going in your head, keep working hard mentally. You don't always have that competition on your side. O'Hara is now in the water. Egan Kelly coming in. In lane two. Now we got Ella in lane three, in lane six in the far lane. Next into the water for lane two. We have uh, Sophia Belanger. And in lane six, Bridget McDonough. Starting to uh, cool off here in the Raynham Athletic Club. There's some cold air flowing into the pool and you can start to see the steam rising off the pool. Not sure if you can pick that up at home on the camera, but um, starting to get a little foggy in here at the Raynham Athletic Club. Emily Kelly on the blocks. Ava's uh, younger sister. She'll be going into her senior year next year. And she's made a good, uh, good tag, good relay tag, and into the water. One of the things these athletes have to practice frequently is the timing of that relay exchange. You don't want to jump the, jump the uh, gun and end up getting a disqualification, particularly when you're out in the out ahead. Kiki Esteman in the water. Another one of our seniors. Steam, that fog continues to rise off the pool. As we wrap up our final event of the meet. And bring it home for Oliver Ames will be senior Sam Stratton. And she's made that safe uh, relay exchange and into the water for the final 100 of the meet. Esteman continuing to look good. Katie Gillespie in the far lane. Ready to make her handoff. Ella Rivers on the blocks. Rivers preparing to make that tag as Esteman comes in. A nice clean transition. As Stratton wraps it up for Oliver Ames here in the center lane. Pushing that pace as best she can, racing herself, racing the clock. Nice smooth stroke bringing it in. It looks we have our final uh, relay tag there in lane six.
Rivers has turned the corner. With uh, Stratton and uh, Ava Kelly graduating this year. Some of these uh, younger swimmers uh, in uh, these early other relays are going to be stepping up next year to that A relay to round it out. And again, you can uh, follow us online um, and check for the results. Uh, usually will be posted on the... Um, Facebook page and the Oliver Ames swim, swim Team Twitter and Instagram pages. So if you're curious about the outcome of the event, uh, once we get those scores from Sharon, uh, we'll tabulate the scores and they'll be posted on the internet uh, tomorrow, usually midday or afternoon tomorrow. And that is a wrap. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. And have a great night.